This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruschi. Featuring author, psychologist, and daily contributor, Siobhan Scott. Richard Allen and the case against him, it's going to trial very, very soon. A hearing taking place just this last week with a lot of different aspects uh, being brought up into it. One of the most compelling pieces, I think, of this hearing was some of the testimony from former Rushville Police Chief Todd Click, who testified. He was part of a small group of uh, detectives that developed the very credible theory initially linking Carroll County Odinus to the girls' killings. And of course, then that transpired into the whole big Odinist 100-some page document that we all went through and kind of rolled our eyes at. But as we get closer and closer, could it have some sort of validity? Because it's seeming to maybe have at least something or an area where the investigators did not look closer. Joining me to discuss, Siobhan Scott, psychotherapist and author, I want to talk specifically about a confession that was made by a man named Elvis Fields uh, early on in this investigation. Mary Jacobs uh, told law enforcement, that's his sister, that uh, Elvis, uh, at the time in 2017, her brother was rambling about being in part of a gang and even talking about killing the two girls at the bridge. Uh, doesn't have the, the, the highest IQ, according to most, uh, but was certainly talking about very specific things in the crime, including where antlers replaced and some other things that really no one else could have known about. Uh, detectives later on saying, well, due to the mass amount of tips that we were getting, uh, the information may have been overlooked. Seems like pretty big information to overlook when tips are coming in. And you have someone who's saying, we have a confession right here. Uh, What's your thoughts on this in terms of the operation of the police, in, in terms of uh, how they categorize what's important to look at, what's not important to look at? Could this have been overlooked because, you know, the Odinist idea and the, the sacrificial idea was so, you know, out there, I guess, on the surface that maybe a regular reasonable person would say, I, we're not, we got too many things over here that seem more credible than the Odinists. What are your thoughts? Yeah, it's certainly possible. You know, we did all roll our eyes, and I, I still kind of do roll yeah. my eyes about the Odinist thing. It would take an awful lot of coordination to have a group of people out in the middle of the day. Uh, are we hunting, you know, thinking that there are going to be teenage girls that just happen to be right out in this location, and we've got all our supplies ready to commit a mass murder, you know, and then everybody keeps it secret after. I mean, you know, it's far-fetched, and we've never seen any kind of Odinist pagan group commit a murder, mm -hmm. a sacrifice, or anything like that. So it's it's a weird theory. However, everything does need to be investigated. Mm -hmm. And we would like to think that the police have always had good judgment in this case and did the right thing, and we're not sure yeah. at this point. And I think that's the thing everybody's concerned about. We just don't feel like this was necessarily handled in the most reliable fashion. And what I find fascinating about this is, is kind of the timeline. You got to think about that too, because the Odinist theory didn't come out till like last year. Um, this all happened in 2017 uh, before any of that was public. Were there police obviously doing investigations on this? Yes. That's uh, you know, what the Rushville police chief Todd click testified to that. Look, we found this information. This was kind of weird. It hadn't been publicized out there, this whole Odinist idea or anything. And this guy is out there saying these sort of things, which, you know, is essentially the catalyst for it, you know, being investigated further and published. But the 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 investigators later on just completely ignored this entire uh, piece of, of investigative work, which actually was done quite well uh, and, and has a, a lot of legs to it. But they just kind of said, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to go down this route. But now we're looking at evidence and the defense going back and saying, okay, we need to see all these interviews. And they're so easy to say, oh, yeah, uh, 70 hours of interviews, gone. We have no log of who we talked to. But you know what? None of that is exculpatory for Richard Allen. If you don't even know who you talked to, right? how is that? How, how could you even make that statement? I'm not saying it is exculpatory or not exculpatory, but... Right. You can't really even make that judgment if you don't even have a basic log of who you talk to. 
Yeah, yeah. It doesn't sound like crack police work, does it? It's no. just it's just shocking not even having a log, you no. know, and and that volume of material that's just lost. It's sickening. It's really tragic. Want to listen ad free? Want advance access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.